Hey, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop. You all know me, I'm your engine guy. Today, at long last, we get to reveal the final assembly on the uh, mysterious radical race engine, the Boss 300, the six cylinder Ford with the Boss cylinder head, the 351 Cleveland styled cylinder head that had been all cut up and made to fit onto a six cylinder Ford engine. This is a world record holder uh, back in 1970 and competition eliminator. I love it. This thing is so much fun. I apologize if you're having troubles. There's no way I can get the lighting right without the chrome blinding you from time to time. Um, I actually was even going to smudge it up a little bit just so it wouldn't mess with the camera, but it's too pretty to do so. This engine has been a really, really long-term project. Um, a lot of you guys know this. I've, I have actually had this conversation privately with hundreds of people. When I took this engine in, I wasn't planning on doing this engine right away. I just took it in and the customer knew I wasn't. And then I decided to do a video because it was such a great looking engine. I couldn't wait to get it apart. So we did a video of, it, of, uh, of the engine and then I did a video the first time I, I took it apart just so that you could see all that. And I shouldn't have posted it as soon as I did and it went viral. We had 2 million views in 60 hours. This thing just went ballistic. Everybody was talking about this engine. This engine, as I said, is a world record holder uh, from 1970. This is a 306 cylinder Ford when a race competition eliminator. They are pounds per cubic inch class. Uh, depend upon how much how many cubic inch you have and and how much your vehicle weighed would be how you line up against another car and the index in which you drag race with this particular combination came out for the first time in 1970 um, my uh, not my customer but the inventor of this particular project here his name is Sherman Sly a lot of you guys would see would remember him uh, especially if you're around my age from a lot of car craft magazines and super stock and all that he had a car at a 23 t bucket roadster called the sly one and i actually got to talk to mr sly he's uh he's in his 80s he's sharp as attack um very very impressed with the gentleman but he told me a lot about this uh, first of all this is a 302 ford cylinder head on top of six cylinder and it has been welded up it has been it is it, they took three Boss 302 heads and cut them up into six individual segments, welded them all together to put together a Cleveland style Boss 302 cylinder head on top of 300 Ford. If you've been following any of my other videos, you got to see the pistons, the rods, and things like that. It's an aluminum rod engine. It's got uh, uh, Cleveland style um, pistons in it. They're gas ported. Uh, it, this is this is so impressive. And this is what Mr. Sly told me. Now, first of all, I'm going to tell you that I can't document every single thing I'm telling you. So, you know, if you want to say something different, just don't beat me up over the facts that I'm giving you because I'm, I'm repeating what I've been told. Now, first of all, there's this engine, this is not like the only one out there. There has been, I, I've probably got word of about 50 of these around the, around the country and around the world. And everybody that has called me and said that they seen one of these, they all think they seen the very only, the, the very the very first one or the only one in existence. Because I don't know anybody who's who's ever said that. Oh, we had three of them at race to the track. It's so it's such a rare combination that everybody who has seen one of these thinks they seen the very first one. But Mr. Sly, uh, Mr. Mr. Sherman Sly, told me to my to my ear that. In 1969, he, he held the record with a regular 300 Ford uh, cylinder head on top of 300 Ford block inside his car. He had a 23T bucket roadster. He had a Chrysler transmission behind it. And if I recall right, I might be messing this up. I think they called it a clutch flight where they use a Chrysler automatic transmission. They do away with the automatic torque converter. It's got a Chrysler, I mean, it's got a clutch for uh, for, for instead of a torque converter and then after you leave the starting line you can shift second and third so this guy was an ingenious man no, he is an ingenious man no doubt about it and he told me that he held the record in 1969 his after he came out with this and and in his first race uh, when he got down the end they came up to his car and said sit down don't get out 
say, congratulations, you just set a new world record. And they said, no, just stay in there. And they hooked a, a tow rope to him, towed him over to the, to, uh, to the, to the check-in lines where they inspect the cars. He told me, he said, they told him, we don't know how you're cheating, but we know you're cheating. He said, because he beat his record by a second. And if you know anything about drag racing, um, that's like uh, kicking a field goal twice as far, hitting, hitting a, a home run, um, not just out of the park, but the distance of another park. A second is gigantic in drag racing, especially when you're talking world records. But he wasn't cheating. And he also told me that in that year, he raced in nine national events. He won seven of them. And two of them, the other two that he lost was because he lit, he, uh, he lit the red bulb, left too soon, and put himself out. So he had something that they couldn't, they couldn't uh, deal with. I've also been told by every single person that has uh, told me that they got to see one of these, that this particular combination has, um, has just torn up every track it's been at. Uh, that, that in, some, in some of the circle tracks uh, that these things have raced, they've been outlawed because it was too much horsepower and the other engines couldn't handle it. What you have to understand about this engine, that this engine is basically a 351 Cleveland bored and stroked to, to a 400 uh, and a 408 combination, except it has two, it's missing two cylinders because we're four inch stroke and a four inch bore. Now, actually, this particular one is now. 4070 bore so i've taken it out a little bit it, it came into my shop as 4060 we sonic test the block the block was solid so as opposed to building buying and starting over with another block uh we took it to 70 thousands that's you know when you think about it 70 an additional 10 thousands is taken five thousands off each side of the cylinder which is equivalent to about the thickness of a dollar bill on each side of the piston so that's not a lot difference even though some people will be like oh that's way too much it's not um, we sonic tested it, we verified it, she's good. Now, this particular engine, you have to understand, is a restoration. I've told lots of people this. I've mentioned it in some of my other videos. I did not go back into this trying to reinvent the wheel. I went back to try to restore a piece of automotive racing history. Uh, this is a car that shouldn't be tampered with. There's all kinds of things that I could do to this. First of all, I could put a dry sump system on this vehicle, would, would improve it greatly. Um, this, this engine was dynoed, not by me, but originally. The combination made 625 horsepower. It was 312 cubic inch, or 310 cubic inch. That's over two horsepower per cubic inch. You have to think about that. For a lot of people, say, oh, 625. Well, I got a, God help me, got an LS engine. You know, all, all, lots of guys have told me, why don't you just put an LS in that car? Because this is a piece of automotive race in history. We're not going to do anything like that to the car. It's a restoration. This car, this car was making 625 horsepower. Two, two horsepower per cubic inch. Think about a 454 Chevrolet naturally aspirated or you know, just injected or carbureted. No nitrous. No, no superchargers. Making 900 horsepower? Um, I'm not saying ain't none out there doing it. It's few and far between. Now you got to remember that the year this was built. That's what's so impressive. That's what gets me excited about this. This engine wouldn't have come into my shop except it had some. It had some major problems. Uh, uh, well, for starters, it had a bad head gasket. That's what's. That's what killed it. It was detonating. Had had some head gasket issues, and that's why it wound up in my shop. And then when we took it apart, if you've seen the other videos, we had a problem with the oil pickups tube, the uh, oil pickup screen that ha had broken. Uh, that would have caused this engine would have probably possibly grenade. But we caught it pretty quick, and um, uh. This also has a fuel injection system here. That's an Enderly fuel injection. And Mr. Sly told me that this was fabricated out of parts uh, from a 292 Chrysler Hemi. So we, you know, we, we really have a real Fordenstein engine here. When uh, you talk about um, 306 cylinder aluminum rod, it's roller cam. Um, it has Boss 302 heads segmented together. It has a lot of epoxy work underneath the valve cover that I hesitate to show guys because I don't want to hear all the negativity about it. It doesn't look pretty, but it's how it was done in the day. If anybody's ever tried to weld cast iron and not just not just cast iron, dirty cast iron, 
Uh, cylinder heads aren't made of the highest quality cast iron, especially not back then. But when you take cast iron and try to weld it to try to get it to where it's not going to leak antifreeze, it's very difficult. So what they did is they, they epoxied all around the, the, all the weld marks and they got the head to stop leaking. And um, I've literally had this thing on my pressure tester. I've checked this head five times. And then after I put this head back on there and I got had it on, uh, and it was all torqued down. I thought, well, what's the possibilities that maybe some, I could cause something to leak by putting all the, the torque on this thing that I had to? So then we took we took hoses and came up off of the off of the uh, the water neck. This is a, this is the custom water neck that's on here. And I took hoses up real high and I filled them full of antifreeze. I had the oil pan off at the time, so I was able to make sure nothing was leaking through there. I could make sure nothing was leaking through the ports. I could look and see nothing was leaking in the cylinders. So you know, it doesn't look pretty. But it works and that's what counts because back here this is all about making it work here's something i want you to see look on the exhaust side here now this is this is one of the things that bob glidden made famous here is an exhaust port this is the actual old port this is the actual cleveland head across here it's a little hard to see because it's all black i hope the contrast is showing but because of these heads were on mustangs the air used to come up and have to, and, and they, they couldn't put a manifold up high to, so that the so that the runner would be nice and gradual and let it flow so the actual air came up and made a sharp turn and it killed the exhaust side of the head so what they actually do is they cut off this side of the head they take a, a port and put on here and now this port runs down into uh, and down to, into the, the, the valve bowl area, but it used to be down here, and now you can see the bottom of this port from right to there has been raised about an inch and a half. So that is a tremendous, tremendous pro stock type modification that all the big names, and of course Bob Glidden was the biggest who was doing this back, back in the day. Um, honestly, I don't think this was on here in 1970. This is something they probably did a little bit later. And if you look here, we have we have this tube that comes up like this and it goes from the block into the head and you see this little air valve nothing makes it easier to get the air bubbles out of your engine than that um, you you can fill up your radiator and just fill it up and fill it up until the air and the bubbles stop coming out of here and then when the cool one starts to flow you lock it off there will be no air pockets in this engine that's just another piece of something that's very simple to do uh, very very intelligent engineering now, let me roll this around and get you a good look at the at the intake side. Now is that cool or what? This looks like the side fire cat number six. This thing this thing is so beautiful and and I get really excited about this because you have to, the whole time you just keep thinking man this is a freaking six cylinder this is a six cylinder and uh, let's see, here we go here. Take, take, a look, take, take a look down in there. Tennis ball size, uh, Venturi's. But that's, that's big, man. That's really big. And, and she's polished all nice. Now, if you want to see some really great modifications, you have to go back and look at one of the other videos where I show the intake runners on this head. The intake runners are completely epoxied up on the floor. Beautiful epoxy job all the way down. The ports are real big. The, por the ports look like my fist almost. Um, they're, they're large and square, kind of like a, like a rectangle port on a big block Chevy. But they close up the bottom of the port because they actually have a little bit too much flow to them. Um, the air comes through there and the f air flows. Uh, the, the port is so big that the speed of the air coming through slows down. Filling up the port adds velocity to it and it gives it a lot more volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency is the amount of air that a cylinder is able to pull into it. If you got a piston that goes from top dead center to bottom dead center and, it, and, and when it drops to bottom dead center it draws in 50 cubic inch of air. Uh, I, I should say if, it's, if a cylinder from top dead center to bottom dead center can hold 50 cubic inch of air, when the piston draws in if it can overfill that, that's a percentage of volumetric efficiency. It can put in more air uh, than than it uh, than it actually is supposed to hold all by itself. Um, if it's drawing in, if it's only drawing in 80% or 90%, that that'll make less horsepower in the engine. Now the ports on the Cleveland are so big that it has a hard time drawing that air in because 
it, the hole is so large the air draws, draws slowly. They raise the runner up, makes the port a little smaller, and, and the air can draw through it quickly. Just like if you was to take a if you was to take a, a big soda and try to suck your soda through a straw, you can draw it through quickly. If I give you a piece of two inch PVC and tell you here, take, use this to, to drink, you, you can't pull it through. So the, you got to get the right size of the port. And this is lots and lots of technology where they go back and forth and they flow these heads. They figure out how, how to make the runner, um, how fast the air travels through. There's a set number that, that a certain amount of airflow through the intake requires a certain amount of airflow through the exhaust. There's, there's a percentage because the air coming in, it's harder to draw it in than it is to push it out. So the exhaust doesn't have to be as efficient as the intake, but there's a certain percentage there. All of that work was done to this head. And about the only thing that I didn't really see is that, uh, like in a Glidden style engine, he had a, back in the day, he had a different type of combustion chamber where they welded up the combustion chambers and made it more like a high swirl combustion chamber that all the engineers today act like they designed, but he was doing it back many years ago. And um, uh, that, it didn't have this. So uh, like if we were going to be do this from scratch and trying to make more horsepower, that's probably one of the things we would do. And, um, we probably stroke this thing a little bit farther, get a little bit more cubic inch out of it. Um, we definitely would change the drainage on the on the way the oil goes back into the engine. We would use a dry sump for sure. For sure. So I mean, there's there's certainly things that could be modified above this. But this is a restoration, and this is going back in the car, looking just like it did before. I'm going to show you one more thing. Actually, maybe two more things. I hate to make a too long of a video, but if this deserves it. So up under here, first of all, take a look at this. Okay, you take a look at this valve cover. Now you guys who have had these things on your Cleveland engine back in the day, you never owned one of these. These guys did a beautiful job where they cut up two and they TIG welded it across here. And you can see where I took two Cleveland valve cover gaskets. And if you can see that little tongue and groove I cut out and I made the valve covers for it, uh, valve cover gasket rather, but that's two gaskets together. That's two valve covers. and the gentleman, when he built this, he did a nice job, put Ford stickers on it, beautiful chrome. Uh, I mean, and, and this stuff is old. So, and up here, they got a homemade stud girdle, and um, it's titanium valves, and uh, actually, let me, let me spin this one around like this. Get on the light a little better. You, up here, this is your intake runner. It's made of epoxy, where they raised the intake up as high as they could, and epoxied it to make the top of the runner and then raise the bottom of the floor up so that the port is a straight shot going down. But she's full roller rocker, titanium valves, triple springs, uh, ti um, uh, titanium retainers. It's all, uh, it's main, uh, main studs, head studs. I mean, she's full racing trim. So anyhow, guys, this is, this is absolutely a cool engine. Um, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, maybe some, Someday here we'll do a video. It's a little longer. That we'll talk a little bit more in depth about um, about the building of it. Uh, a lot of people want to know why it was taking so long. That by itself is is a long story, and uh, I don't want I don't want to mix all that into here. But um, we're going to be giving this back to the customer here real soon, and uh, he'll be picking it up probably one day next week, and then it's going to go into the vehicle, and. Um, uh, Actually, I, I don't know what they're going to be doing with this car, so I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. Please don't ask me a thousand questions about this. Um, this car may be up for sale. Uh, things change in people's lives, and I, and I won't go into anyone's personal business, but this is this is a really nice car, and the guy who's putting it in, his name is Rob Cook. Uh, Rob is a great guy, and he is uh, got an eye for detail, quality man, um, honest person. Somebody, somebody you can definitely, you can definitely trust. But he's he's putting his car back together. He's done a lot of restorations. But um, him and his dad uh, had originally started this, and his uh, his, his dad probably won't be racing right now. So anyway, um, guys, thanks for thanks for uh, sharing, and uh, uh, thank you for your shares. Thank you for your likes. Our last video had eighty seven thousand shares. Just on this engine, the first video, 87,000 shares. So if you feel inclined to do that for me again, 
Thank you very much, and we'll be back on here again soon.